Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, ever since Cyberpunk 2077 launched a month ago, well, almost two months ago now, the developers have been hard at work on various patches to improve the performance and stability of the game. Cyberpunk didn't exactly have the smoothest of launches to say the least, though if there was ever a defining argument for the case of PC gaming versus consoles then bringing this title up in conversation would surely sway said argument in any PC gamer's favour. I mean PC is clearly the best platform to play this on, though it is still far from perfect, especially on lower end hardware. We've seen a few updates now, and one specific hotfix that I, and I'm sure a lot of you lower end PC gamers out there were thankful for, was the 1.05 patch. This added support, or fixed support I should say, for dual core processors. But here we are on the 24th of January 2021 and CD Projekt Red have just released patch 1.1 for Cyberpunk 2077. I've reassembled the Cyberpunk Minimum Specs PC, or part of it anyway, and today we're going to see how this latest update affects the performance. According to the patch notes there have been various stability improvements with the game including memory usage improvements. I've also seen a few YouTube videos that detail lower CPU usage which would be ideal for us because the i5-3570K was really struggling in Night City. Let's get into it then and see if our 3570K, GTX 780 and 8GB of dual channel memory perform any better than they did back on release day. So starting off with the countryside, first of all, this is more GPU intensive and from what I could tell the RAM usage and VRAM usage was actually higher here than it was with the game on release day. That being said, the average frame rate doesn't change and neither does the 1% low figure. The 0.1% low figure however is actually a little higher, which indicates a little less stutter. And to be honest, the game did feel a little bit smoother here. Now this is hardly a pinpoint accurate test, I'm just following the same route as I did back in the first video, using exactly the same settings. Our first test uses native 1920 by 1080 and if we throw up the comparative table, you can see the slight performance change. I then enabled dynamic resolution and set the game to drop from full 1080p to 70% of 1080p in order to target 60fps. The little town that we pass through causes the same frame drops it always has done and the weird floating pedestrian hasn't been patched yet. But overall our dynamic results are a little better this time round and I'd still recommend making use of the dynamic rest settings if you have this hardware or similar. Now comparing these test results to the early 1.02 version of the game is even less accurate because of the dynamic resolution here, but the game certainly felt smoother in this area, but we must move on to Night City because this is where any improvements will really matter. So in Night City I decided to repeat the 60% of 1080p static resolution test because these settings gave us the best results first time around. Here it seems as though the game is using more system memory, which could well be contributing to the higher average frame rate. If we look at the comparative results, the percentile 1 and 0.1% lows are pretty similar, though we're still getting dips mainly thanks to our CPU which is struggling. But then again, it will do because it's still the limiting factor. While a patch might be able to improve a game's performance, it can't do much for a quad-core CPU that, in all honesty, could really benefit from some hyper-threading right now. With that said though, the latest patch has still improved performance with the minimum specs PC from what I can tell. It's not a major improvement which was expected, but any changes, whether they are to the percentile or average figures, are always welcome. As a final test I decided to switch to 1080p native and use the low settings just to see how the game ran and at this point the GTX 780 is back to taking more of the brunt though our i5 will still hit 100% usage occasionally. I never tested native res in the city beforehand but even so it's likely that it wouldn't have been playable then just like it isn't now. Well it is in some areas but even with crowd density set to low the frame dips are too severe to continuously enjoy this experience. 
With all that said then, the latest patch certainly makes some improvements to the frame rate figures, though you probably wouldn't notice too much of a difference if you don't have a frame counter on, at least not in Night City. Of course, this is just one specific set of hardware, and any changes in frame rate might be way more or way less significant with other hardware. Let me know in the comments how this patch has impacted your game on your PC and whether or not things are better or worse than they were before. With all that said then, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. I guess now we wait for the next patch and uh, continue testing Cyberpunk and see how it performs with this lower end hardware into the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.